fall is here, and even though things have slowed down a bit, the beautiful weather we have at this time of year is still attracting many visitors to Chatham. I'm Huntley Harrison, together with Richard Garvin and Jerry Panuchik, to bring you the October installment of Chatham Today, the show that keeps you up to date with what's happening in the town of Chatham. Today, we are at the Atwood House Museum to take a tour and chat with director Dennis McFadden. But first, we will catch you up on the events and activities for the month of October. The first exhibition of the fall at the Creative Arts Center, the September Invitational, is wrapping up on October 7th. This special exhibition of art by artists from the bridge to Race Point is a must-see. The center is open from Monday through Friday, 9 to 4 p.m. The next exhibition is the Autumn Sacrifice Art Sale, which will run from Thursday, October 10th through Saturday, October 12th, and again Monday, October 14th, during regular gallery hours. Entry day is Wednesday, October 9th, from 9 to 2, and pickup is Tuesday, October 15th, also from 9 to 2. This will be followed by the Members Show, which will run from October 20th through November 21st, with entry day on October 15th. There will be a reception and an award ceremony on Sunday, October 20th, from 4 to 5.30 p.m. As usual, if you want further information about these workshops and other classes at the Center, check their website at www.capecodcreativearts.org. It is on the screen now. The Creative Arts Center in Chatham provides a vibrant educational resource for all ages where the visual arts are explored and celebrated through classes, exhibitions, and special events. The Arts Center is on Kroll Road. You can call them at 508-945-3583. Drop in, take a tour, and inquire about becoming a member. And now, the October events at the Council on Aging. Come for lunch and stay for the program. Monday luncheon at the Chatham Council on Aging Cafe. Eat in or take out. Prepared by our chef, $7 includes bread basket, entree, beverage, and dessert. Reservations required by the Friday before. Please call. Homemade soup to go. Heat and enjoy at home or stock up your freezer. $4 a pint, available through the week while supplies last. The October birthday party for those seniors with October birthdays will be on Monday, October 21st at 2 p.m. On Monday, October 28th at 1 p.m., antique appraisals with Henry Callan. Mr. Callan will identify each item indicating its country of origin, age, and value. This will be an educational and enjoyable show and tell. The cost is $5 per item, but please note, stamps, coins, and jewelry are excluded. On Wednesday, October 2nd, there will be an adult flu clinic from 9 to noon at the community center. The clinic is open to all Chatham residents 18 years of age and older. Pre-registration and an appointment are required, and you must bring a valid insurance card to the appointment. Registration is going on now. Call the COA at 508-945-5190. The clinic is being sponsored by the Town of Chatham in cooperation with the VNA of Cape Cod. Also during October, there are new dance offerings, adult tap and jazz classes, beginner jazz, Stretching, move to the music, learn combinations. Introduction to tap. This class is designed for anyone who has never taken tap. Beginner tap. Learning the same material as intermediate, but at a slower pace. Intermediate tap for those who have been tapping throughout their lives. Call the COA for schedule and details. And finally... The annual Halloween program will be held on Thursday, October 31st. Stop in for a spell and celebrate Halloween. 
The 1974 Mel Brooks movie, Young Frankenstein, a great show, I loved it, you gotta laugh, starring Gene Wilder and Madeline Kahn, will be shown. The movie is free to anyone wearing a costume. One dollar donation otherwise. So come, eat, drink, and be scary. Reservations are required. Call the COA at 508-945-5190. And now, for what's happening at the Eldridge Library. As you may know, the library is temporarily closed while measures are being taken to improve conditions in the library building. Once the work is accomplished, they will reopen on their usual schedule. You can check on the progress by visiting the library website at eldridgelibrary.org. The address is on the screen now. Nevertheless, the library programs will continue to be presented at the Chatham Community Center. Here are the offerings for October. Mondays, from 10.30 a.m. to noon, the Chatham Writers at 02633 meets. The members meet to explore different writing genres, share your work with the group, and receive guidance and feedback. Each year, they publish an anthology of their work if you would like to join this group, call Jeff Honor at 945-9962. Thursdays at 6.30 p.m., Fiction Writers Group. Improve your fiction writing through polite, diverse, and helpful critiques from fellow writers. This group is limited to eight members. Please call Joe DeRosa, 945-9107, for more information or to sign up. Fridays at 10.30 a.m., Memoirs Group. Anyone can write about their experiences, but do you need tips to make them interesting reading? If you want to join this group, call Mal Ward at 945-4284. Book and Author Events. Thursday, October 3rd at 3 p.m., Ron Lasko will share his personal fly fishing experiences on the Quashnet and Mashpee Rivers in search of the unique species of sea-run brook trout that are largely limited to these two rivers. His book, A Tale of Two Rivers, covers the history of the rivers, the ecological issues, and of course some fly fishing tactics and patterns. Tuesday, October 15th at 7 p.m., The Hunted Whale by James McGain is a spectacular photographic exploration of the material culture of American whaling in the age of sail, before the coming of steam and diesel ships with instruments of mechanized slaughter. The hunt was a relatively even contest between two wily mammals, man and the sperm whale. Expertly curated and beautifully shot, this magnificent photo essay takes the viewer to the New England ports of the fledgling America as it struggles to dominate a global industry. Tuesday, October 22nd at 7 p.m., come and meet author Cheryl Kane as she talks about her book, Letters to My Mama. After her mom and best friend died, Cheryl Kane was devastated, heartbroken, without a map for a future. Cheryl began writing letters to her mother as an attempt to keep the conversation going, becoming an accidental poet and painter to express her overwhelming feelings. The letters remind her that her mother's love and attention continue on, and the growth of the mother-daughter relationship is no longer limited to the physical world. Tuesday, October 29th at 7 p.m., experienced writer Paul Kemprekos has given us a new epic thriller, The Emerald Scepter. This book is an action-packed with adventure, myths, heroes, history, and more. A Georgetown University professor has written to the U.S. State Department about a possible reality of a mythical jeweled cross. The government sends an ex-naval officer, Matt Hawkins, to his team to uncover the mystery and the ever-popular learning series will continue as scheduled at the community center. This program of academic and general courses open to the public at a cost of $10 per course and takes place Mondays through Thursdays. Contact the program co-chairs Sheila Marks, 945-4058, or Barbara Fui, 
at 945-5031 or call the library 945-5170 with any questions. Again, due to the ongoing work at the library, we remind you to check the library website for update information and to find out about other programs and events. Their website is on the screen right now. Wrapping up the month of October, we would like to call your attention to a few events of general interest. The Pumpkin Patch, from Tuesday, October 1st through Thursday, October 31st. The First Congregational Church will be selling pumpkins at the Rotary. The front lawn will be filled, so come down and pick your pumpkin. Three more Lighthouse Tours in October, Wednesdays, October 2nd through the 16th, from 1 to 3.30 p.m., weather permitting. Caleb Nickerson House, Harvest Celebration. Bring in the harvest and cooking on the open hearth. Sunday, October 6th, from 10 to 2 p.m., 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., let me repeat that. Join Caleb House Artisans, Ann Firth, Maureen Leavenworth, and Richard Noyes as they harvest late crops and celebrate with a colonial buffet cooked on the open hearth. Ann Firth will demonstrate methods of drying and storage of the harvest. Maureen Leavenworth will have the hearth brimming with savory delights from the past, and Richard Noyes will demonstrate woodcraft of the colonial period. Come early to help with the harvest and food preparation. The buffet will be served from 12 to 2 p.m. and is $20 per person. Please call Maureen Leavenworth for reservations at 508-255-8821. The Caleb Nickerson House is at 1107 Orleans Road, Route 28, North Chatham. Also on October 6th, the Feast of St. Francis and the Blessing of the Animals at St. Christopher's Church. This will take place immediately following the 10 a.m. service. The fall offering at the Chatham Drama Guild on Kroll Road will be the quintessential American classic comedy drama, Bus Stop by William Inge. The show will run from October 11th through the 27th on Fridays and Saturdays at 8 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m. Reserve your tickets now by calling the Drama Guild office at 508-945-0510. The box office is open 4 to 6 p.m. Tuesday and Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. Friday, Saturday, and 12 to 2 on Sunday. Adults, $18. Students, 10. Groups of 10 or more, 15 per person. On Saturday, October 12th, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., the First United Methodist Church will be sponsoring a church-wide yard sale. Okay, Chatham Gallery Openings. All the galleries on Main Street will open from 4 to 6 p.m. on Saturday, October 12th. And for the main event of the month, Oktoberfest, Pumpkin People in the Park, a Chatham Merchants Association sponsored event, October 19th through October 31st at Cape Gould Park and the Bandstand. They will be surrounded by creative and innovative pumpkin people fashioned by local businesses, organizations, or just some plain folk. They are on display from October 19th until Halloween. However, these larger-than-life creations are just the frost on the pumpkin, the day of the festival. And, speaking of the festival, the Oktoberfest festival will be on Saturday, October 26th, from noon to 4 p.m. Get there early, because the lines start forming at noon for old-fashioned games, the tasty German fare, and some beer and fun in the park. Join us in the excitement of celebrating Oktoberfest. Also, don't forget the annual Nun Run on Saturday the 19th from 9 to 11 a.m. at the Red Nun. This special fall tradition is a blast for runners, walkers, and spectators alike. Post-race party at the Red Nun. All proceeds go to Dream Day, a camp for seriously ill children and their families. Finally, Meet the fleet at the Cape Cod Commercial Hook Fishermen's Association, Tuesday, October 29th, from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Join local fishermen and learn about life on the water and the different types of seafood they bring to shore for us all to enjoy. Chefs give cooking tips and samples of the locally harvested seafood. Members are free, non-members $10. The Hook Fisherman's Association is at 
1566 Main Street, Chatham. If you are interested in attending, call 508-945-2432, extension 111, or check their website, www.capecodfisherman.org. We are visiting with Dennis McFadden, the Executive Director of the Atwood House Museum here in Chatham. He will take us on a tour of the museum and tell us about the events occurring during the month of October. Dennis? Thanks very much. It's great to have you with us. and We're really delighted that you're here today. I thought I'd begin by talking just a little bit about the general purpose of the museum and what we try to do. And then maybe we'll walk through and look at an exhibition and the old house and maybe even get outside and look at the Nickerson camp. We really aspire at the society to be the responsible steward of this town's collective memory. That's really what the Historical Society is about and what we try to do with the museum. And we do it in a number of different ways. One of them is that we do special exhibitions on topics that relate to the history of Chatham and to people who were crucial in that history. An example that's up right now and that you can visit through October 12th, through Columbus Day weekend, is our exhibition about Spalding Dunbar and the extraordinary boats he, he designed. The exhibition begins over here and really starts with an introduction to sailing in Chatham. We didn't want to look only at a personality, but we wanted to talk as well about why sailing was important, what its role was in the life of this community. So we looked at the history of sailing here, which really dates, and I'm talking now about recreational sailing or yachting, back into the 19th century. And looked at that and looked at how that was a part of, of Chatham becoming a tourist destination. From that, we then focused in on Spalding Dunbar, who had traveled here and stayed here during summers as a child, and after completing his education at MIT, settled here and became a designer and, and ran a boatyard here along with his wife, Doris Dunbar. The exhibition begins here with talking about the history of sailing in Chatham, and then continues through these galleries and includes a number of panels on some of his most significant designs, as well as some of his original drawings and some spectacular half models. If you have any interest in sailing, this is a must visit. You've got to see it. But even if you're not interested in sailing, if you simply love Chatham and love the town, this is so much a part of who we are. That we hope you'll come and visit us. The museum will be open between now and the 12th of October from Tuesdays through Saturdays from 1 to 4 in the afternoon. Please do stop by. The Atwood House Museum and the Chatham Historical Society were founded in 1923, and they were founded for a very specific purpose in mind, which was to preserve the house that we're now in. This is the Captain Atwood House. It's a mid-18th century house, and the house now appears much as it did at different moments in its history. The Atwood family owned the house for five generations, and it was only when they decided to give it up that it became the home of the Chatham Historical Society. A group of local women, members of a reading group, came together they had been concerned about the loss of Chatham's history. At this house and preserving it was one means they found to preserve that history and to save it. So the house was then saved in the 1920s and since has been the home of the Chatham Historical Society. In addition to preserving the house and presenting it to the public through a series of tours that we offer on a regular basis, the other way that we save the history of this town is through its records. We have an extraordinary archives that contain the, the records, the letters, the photographs of many individuals and many events and places that have been important in this town. The archives are available to the public by appointment. So if you've got a personal interest or a personal research project you'd like to pursue, please get in touch with us. We'd love to have you come in and use some of the resources we have. I'm a relative newcomer to Chatham. I've only been here a little bit more than a year. And when I came here, and when I was actually thinking about coming to Chatham, I came to the website of the Chatham Historical Society and looked at the paintings that are in this room. These are the murals by Alice Stolnacht, and they are an extraordinary collection. When I saw them on the website, they really didn't impress me a whole lot. They were a little bit hard to understand and appreciate. Once I came here and actually walked into this room, I was just extraordinarily blown away by them. This is one of the really unique things that we have at this museum. Nobody else has something like these. Alice Stolnick painted here in the 1930s and 40s, and as you can see, the subject matter really crosses the lines between her interest in, in public government, in small town policy, in small town governance, and the way that it operates, 
and also in religion and the place of religion in American culture. This combination produced this extraordinary group of paintings, inspired by the latest currents really in European painting at the time, but also the people who were painting for the WPA and doing public murals. And then with that, she combined the, this interest in character and in personality of a small town, and then went one further and actually chose as her subject the community citizens of Chatham, people who actually lived here and worked here. And we still have people who can walk in the room, point to someone and say, oh, that was my school teacher in such and such a grade. It's an extraordinary way to connect to the past of this town and a real blessing and a real offering for this town that nobody else has. The life of a town like Chatham is found in part in the extraordinary paintings of, of individuals who lived here, uh, in the furnishings that furnished a house like the Atwood House. But it's also found discovered in artifacts like this. Uh, this little cabin, this camp really, it's one of the North Beach camps, was owned by the Nickerson family. And they built it in the 1940s as part of an ongoing series of camps that were built on land or on a sand spit that really in some places no longer exists. And the actual location of this camp no longer exists. If it had been allowed to stay on the North Beach, it would have been washed out to sea. We were very fortunate in that the Nickerson family made it available to the museum brought it over across Pleasant Bay on a barge and had it installed here at the Atwood House. It's again one of these unique things that nobody else has and that speaks so clearly to the history of this town and the life of this town. These camps are part of a, the use of the North Beach over time beginning at the end of the 19th century when it was often a site that hunters and fishermen went to and stayed where they stayed briefly and then subsequently really became a resort for the people of Chatham, for people who lived here year round and would maintain these very simple um, cottages or camps out there. No indoor plumbing, no electricity, no refrigerators. You took a 50-pound block, block of ice out with you on Friday if you were going out for the weekend. People have also report of having spent essentially their entire summers here, and then there are wonderful stories of people who went out for the winter holidays as well. It's again part of the history of Chatham, and a part that in large part has vanished. There are a few camps left, but nowhere near the 40 or so that I believe were originally there. And here you can see one exactly as it looked when the, when the owners last walked out of it. Inside, the furnishings are still there. There are a couple empty liquor bottles on, a, on one of the shelves. The ice box is there, the wood stove is there. It's all intact and a wonderful glimpse into an extraordinary chapter in our past. This is the light from the Chatham Lighthouse, one of the original ones. And whenever it's on and turning around, you can stop in because the museum will be open. And while that's only for a couple more weeks in October, our programming runs year-round, and we'd love to see you at our Sunday lectures or one of our other special events. We've got a couple of those coming up in October. The first is on Sunday, October 13th at 2 in the afternoon, when Guy Berube will talk about his uncle's work in developing the airport here in Chatham. The second is our Haunted Happenings, which is an event for kids between ages about 4 and 10 on the 26th of October, that's Saturday afternoon from noon to 3. There'll be some fun activities and a great time for the little ones to come and have a, have a prelude to the Halloween holiday. Thanks a lot for visiting the Atwood House. It's been great to have you here. That wraps it up for this time. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Chatham Today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you down the road.